Hey guys, this is John with Carrot Customs, and in this video I'm going to tell you about my 1997 Ford F-350 crew cab long bed four wheel drive with a Cummins diesel in it. This truck is the very first OBS that I did a conversion on, and it is the truck that basically started Carrot Customs. I bought it in Sweet Home, Oregon from an ex-logger and it was a, a logging truck. So it was a little bit beat up, but nothing unrepairable. So I've had it for about six years. When I originally did the conversion, it had 158,000 miles on it. It now has about 222,000 miles, somewhere thereabouts and it has ran like a champ. It has had countless things done to it and the conversion's kind of been done and redone and changed a lot, but this is the truck that started it all. And since then, I couldn't tell you how many conversions we've done. It's a lot and they all keep getting better and better. So let's take a look at the outside, then we'll go through what's done under the hood with the engine, the transmission, suspension, drivetrain, and then we'll get to the interior. So yeah, let's check it out. So starting on the front, we have the Buckstop Vintage Series bumper. Buckstop hit me up about putting this bumper on the truck and I must say, I was a little hesitant at first because I really like the clean factory bumper that these trucks come with, but once they showed up with this thing, I was incredibly excited. I think it looks super good. The fit and finish is better than anything I've ever seen. These guys obviously take great pride in their work and it shows with their bumper. I still need to get some lights to fill the holes. I need to put a winch in, but for now, I'm very, very happy with how this bumper fits, how it looks. It is just, they did a really great job. Then we got, let's see, we got headlights. Headlights were built by Tony Rojo. They're projector headlights with just new clear lenses. And those two are super great. It, my old lights were just fogged up. You couldn't even see through them. They were so bad. These are, it's like driving a new truck at night when you, with these headlights. It has a bug guard on the hood. I'm not a fan. The truck came with the bug guard though, so. And you can see where it's worn through the paint. So not very, didn't want to take it off. Kind of have to leave it. Let's see, the rest of the truck is fairly, you know, on the outside, fairly stock. We've got a transfer flow toolbox fuel tank that is a 45 to 50 gallon fuel tank that I run as my primary fuel tank. I hate having to fill up all the time, so that is my main fuel tank. Obviously, the outside of the bed is pretty clean. I've got a B&W gooseneck hitch. Oh, there's Trey. That's my three-legged healer, he's pretty cool. Inside the bed is a little beat. Some of that, a lot of it's from me, some of it's from the previous owner, but this is a work truck. It gets used as a work truck quite regularly. It it's not a show truck, so I try to keep the outside clean, but the bed is just, it's a truck bed. So we will move on to the suspension and steering. In the front here, you can see our steering linkage. That is the second generation of our heavy duty steering linkage for these trucks. No, you don't have to have the coilover suspension for it to work, it's designed to work on stock leaf springs as well. But this 
steering linkage makes a huge difference. We use Synergy Manufacturing's tie rod ends, which are metal on metal. Their tie rod ends are on the knuckles and where the drag link meets the tie rod. The tie rod end that goes to the pitman arm is a GM one ton tie rod end, but this setup makes, it really does make a big difference in how it steers. It gets rid of the dead spots in the steering wheel from the tie rod roll because we use the low misalignment tie rod end bushings which you can see here on the knuckles they still give it some flex but they stop that that roll and dead spot this here you can see is the double adjuster it makes it super nice to do an alignment on all you do is loosen that gold pinch bolt and you turn the silver sleeve one way or the other to lengthen or shorten it and We've gotten lots of reviews from alignment shops that love doing alignments on this because it's so easy. And this isn't like your standard weld together setup. It is welded, it's all TIG welded, but it's hard to see in the video here, but you can see we put a bend in the tube in order to clear the diff cover at full lock. If you don't have a bend in the tube or you aren't running offset tie rod ends, the tube, the tie rod will make contact with the diff cover and it, it just, it doesn't work as well. So suspension wise, we have a three link coil over suspension running two and a half inch Fox shocks with progressive rate springs. This is all custom made by us. I know we've talked about getting this on the market for a long time and yes we are still going to we've just had a lot of things come up and we were waiting on getting the tooling and we finally have gotten to the place where we can do it but it's just going to take some time we're not going to cut any corners we're going to do it right it it's going to be pretty great this front suspension rides fantastic so down here you can see the upper link. Like I said, it's a three link setup. And the lower link, we, this has all been calculated out in order to have no bump steer and no caster issues during travel. And I must say this front suspension rides smoother than any factory truck I've been in. Even the new Fords and Dodges stock form do not feel as smooth in the front as this. A Duramax on the other hand, they're pretty smooth. It's hard to beat that independent front suspension when it comes to ride quality. Next you'll see the ZF6 cross member there. That's our cross member that we sell. This truck does have a ZF6 in it and I will show you why here in a little bit. And then you can see the coolant filter. Went with the coolant filter just to keep the coolant clean and keep the head gasket good, keep, just make the life of the cooling system last longer. The rear suspension in this truck is pretty basic. It is stock. It's the factory springs with the factory blocks and some nicer shocks that are getting old now and probably need to be replaced. And then a set of our traction bars. Nothing too fancy here, but the traction bars make a huge difference. Especially with this Torquey Cummins, you could feel the diff wrapping every time that you shifted gears or were trying to take off, especially towing a trailer. And right after putting the traction bars on, it is so noticeable because the power just goes straight to the ground. You aren't getting that diff wrap and I'm not trying to sell ours to you. I'm just traction bars in general, when you're towing especially, or you've got uh, a decently powerful truck, they are well worth it. Down here you'll see our cat 
style fuel filter setup. It's not a fast pump or anything. It's just a fuel filter housing with fuel filter in line. So before we show you under the hood, I should mention that down here we have our transmission cooler. The ZF5 didn't need a transmission cooler, but a ZF6 does. And we couldn't use the factory transmission cooler in the radiator because the lines were on the wrong side. So we got this derail transmission cooler off of Amazon. It's got a nice fan there to help add with cooling. And we made these little mounts here that bolt up to the core support. You just drill a couple holes and this setup fits behind the stock bumper fits behind this bumper really hoping it fits with the winch in there but i guess we'll find out we've had some people ask if we would sell those if people are still interested i'll throw a few sets together and see what you guys think we haven't tested them on a diesel core support because this truck was originally a gas one but i should mention this truck was originally a 460 five-speed truck with 355 gears. It still has the 355 gears. It obviously doesn't have the 460 in it anymore and the five-speed did not make it. You can see here, this is the bottom half of the gear case where the drain plug is. It broke apart. I honestly don't drive my trucks very hard. This is, I mean, it's a work truck, so it gets used as such, but it's towed some real heavy loads, probably heavier than it ever should have. And it that aluminum case will only stretch so many times before it decides to call it quits. I was just, I was literally cruising down the highway, shifting into fifth gear, got it into fifth, was cruising, getting ready to pull off to go back home, and all of a sudden I felt a tink. And what do you know? Get out, stop moving forward, and there's transmission fluid all over everything, and the bottom half of my transmission is visible. All right, now we'll check out under the hood. There is the 12 valve Cummins. It is a P-Pump 12 valve, 95 or 96. The, it's a 215 P-Pump. The pump was rebuilt by Seth at Feral Diesel for max flow on a stock pump. Nothing too crazy, but it's got a 4K Gov Spring kit, a te Torque Tech overflow valve, power driven diesel 5x112 or 5x12 injectors, their power driven diesels AFC live kit. Over here for the turbos, we've got an HE 351 off of an 05 to 06 common rail Cummins, I believe. Then down below, you can see where the HT 3B with the 23 centimeter exhaust housing is. It is a very tight fit with the factory AC box and AC parts. This setup works well, but it doesn't work great. I want to replace it with a, an S400 series turbo or even maybe an, an S369 because the HT3B rotates the opposite direction of normal turbos. So you aren't able to get, there's not very much room for piping because it rotates the opposite direction, the outlet on the turbo comes out pointed just right at the AC box. And even if you clock it, it's gonna be pointing down at the frame to where going with a, an S300 or S400 type of turbo, it rotates the opposite direction and you will have your outlet, your discharge pointing straight up, which makes for nice clean piping. But it works for now. And like I said, this truck gets used a lot and I just haven't made the time to get another turbo for it. I do really like the HE351. It is a sweet running turbo. 
we've ran this turbo on a first gen 12 valve VE pump and it is by far the best turbo we've ran on those trucks. It's, they're not that expensive, they run really clean and they make great power with a lot lower EGTs than an HX35. Here you can see our AC compressor mount uses all factory Ford AC lines and wiring. It uses a belt that's available at any auto parts store. The idler pulley is actually off of a 7.3 power stroke from this generation. Makes it very easy to source if when you have to replace it. That works great. Believe it or not, this truck is still running the DCS motor mounts down there. Even though we have our own, we just haven't had time to swap them into this truck. But great part about our mounts is we designed them to put the engine in the same place as the DCS mounts. So if you have DCS mounts and they're worn out or you want to upgrade, let us know. You can, these will bolt right up and your engine will still be in the proper location. Down here, you'll see just a champion aluminum radiator. It's 460 radiator. It cools just fine. Like I said, I've hauled some real heavy loads with this. I've gone over a 6% grade pass with about gross weight of 30,000 pounds between the truck and the gooseneck with the AC on and didn't have any cooling issues. You will see we're only running one battery. It works fairly well. It is, I would recommend going with two. We want to go to two batteries in this, but time and you know, it's just not the highest priority right now. Um, if the truck is more stock, then going with one battery is just fine, but when you have your timing turned up like this one is at about 19 degrees, and it used to have a marine head gasket in it, which is thicker and lowered the compression ratio, it makes it a lot harder to start in the winter time. Now it's got a stock head gasket back in it again, and it, it starts just fine. That is pretty much the gist of under the hood. Nothing too fancy, it runs really great. It is dead reliable and like I said, this conversion's got about 70,000 miles on it. Even though the motor's been pulled, you know, a couple times to reseal and when the transmission broke, decided it was a good time to reseal it and put a stock head gasket back in. All right, guys, now on to the interior. There's nothing super special inside. We just have stock seats here with the obvious 220,000 miles of wear and tear. Stock steering wheel, more obvious 227,000 thousand miles of wear and tear. Though it's better than the other one I got somebody electrical taped it and you get sticky stuff all over your hands now every time you get in it or drive it so now on to what everybody has been wanting to see this is our double din dash pad kit this is the very first one that we pulled off the mold it is wrapped in vinyl all fiberglass and it's pretty sweet, if I do say so. Um, this is a complete stock replacement. So all you have to do is cut a small section out of the top of the dash to fit the, the taller doubled-in deck. And then it goes right in. It's, it would take somebody maybe an hour to do an install, if that. Then, down here, we have our Omni Dash. We aren't currently producing these. And, uh, boost gauge is being a little finicky, but that's all right. This is uh, what controls the heater grids. 
shows our battery voltage, shows intake air temp, outside air temp, EGTs. I don't know if you guys saw. It controls outputs, so anything that we want on switches, it's right there. Super handy. I just need to replace that boost pressure sensor. I'll fire it up and show you guys. special back here got two 10 inch pioneer subs with a kicker amp all memphis speakers the stereo sounds really nice and other than that you can see where the shifter is for the zf6 just like it's meant to be there in stock so that is my 97 F350 with Cummins in it. All right guys, so that is a quick overview of my 97 F350. It's a great truck and it's had a lot of pretty cool work done to it. Of course, we're gonna do some more detailed videos on our dash pad and install and show you guys how that whole thing works. This is just the first prototype and uh, we're working on the production. They're gonna be out soon, so stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please subscribe and comment below. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like and other things that you'd like to see. If you saw something on this video where you'd like to see some more in depth uh, information on, on anything in particular, let me know. Other than that, thank you guys for checking us out and hope you all have a wonderful day. Cheers.